Oh, thank you for calling to the Social Security Administration. You're speaking with an officer, David Dad, and how can I help you today? Uh, I was uh, I, I was confused as far as what's going on. Um, what what seems to be the problem? Oh no. I have no idea. This is the first I've heard of it. Certainly. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. My my name is James uh, Smith. My first name is James. Smith. Alright. James Smith. That's me. Do you have any suffixes you know, any Roman numbers? Or do you use any bit on each Um I I'm I'm sorry? What what was that? Oh oh middle initial. Oh well my my, my middle name is Scott. That's correct. All right, just hold the line for a moment, but we're going to have to pull up the phone. Hold the line. Okay. It's the Social Security. You know, I, I don't know what's going on. I'm doing, I was doing fine until uh, something seems to be going on. Uh, so what? what's going on? Are you there? I am here. Are you there? Okay, thank you for holding the line and thank you for your patience. Your file has been opened over here in my system. So the reason today you can not get to the Social Security Administration because there is some legal action has been taken against your name and it's against your social security number. Like in the state of Texas, someone is trying to misuse your personal information under the fraudulent activities. So there is an arrest warrant is activated under your name and we also have got an order to go ahead and suspend your social security number at this right present moment. So do you have any idea about this? Well, that sounds like a, I mean, that, that's, that's got to be, I mean, that's a bunch of BS, because that, that, I don't understand why that could be happening to me right now. Um, so, I mean, it's... I'm not allowed, or if you're not aware about this, so it might be this is an identity theft. Uh, oh, well, it's got to be. Uh, it might be, okay, because you don't know, like, what is going on. So it might be this uh, identity theft. Because over here, your file has to see you. I have to go ahead and I have to open your case file so that I can tell you more about this case. The verification process of your date of birth and your social security number, it's very important and it's very essential so that I can make sure that I'm talking to the right person and I'm giving this confidential information to the right hand. So Mr. Smith, verify me your date of birth. What is your date of birth? Um, hold, hold on just a second. Can, um... Can I switch phones? Right. I can barely hear you. All right. Okay, hold on just a moment. Can you write me a social security number real quick and all that stuff? Oh, that's that's so much better. Okay. okay. All right. So, is it okay for you? Are you ready? Uh, I can hear you so much better. So, uh, what okay, do you need? Okay, that's beautiful. So, Mr. Smith, where you find me your date of birth? Certainly. Uh, my date of birth is going to be July twenty fourth, nineteen seventy five. Where you find me your social security number? Uh, Social Security number is four three seven 
Case number again, because I, I my pen was. Case number is T X T as in Tango, X as in X ray. Seven O one O. The case number. Okay. Your reference number is five three seven five four two. Did you copy that? Seven five. You said O two. It's five three seven five. Number four and the number two. Okay. Uh, so now, Mr. Smith, I want you to be repeat me the details which I've given you so that I can make sure that you have made no mistake while writing it. All righty. Uh, your, your name is David Black. Officer David Black. Right. Uh, your badge number is 615 Six three one seven. And the batch number is six one five six three one nine. It's not a seven, it's nine. Oh, I'm sorry about that. So um six one five six five three one nine. That's correct. Okay, and the uh the case number TX seven zero one zero, and that's correct. And then the reference number is five three five seven four two. No, that's not. It's five three seven five 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a little dyslexic, so I, I kind of write things wrong. So, um, so <clears throat> let's see. Uh, three five seven five four two. It's five three, Mister. You're repeating me correct first, then you're repeating me wrong some other number. I, I'm dyslexic. It's I'm, five I'm, three. The number five. The number three. Seven five four two. Uh, okay, I've got it. That's. It's written down. All right, repeat me the once again, please, so that on this recorded line. Okay, it's five three, five seven four two. It's not five seven, Mister. It's seven five. It's not five three seven five. Okay, um, it's five three seven five four two. That's correct. Okay. Now, Mr. Smith, I will go ahead and I will read out the legal charges which have been filed and placed against you on me. So I will highly appreciate if you do not interrupt me in between while I'm speaking and explaining this case to you. Because this line has been monitored and recorded by the Department of Justice for evidence purposes. But yes, I will be giving you a fair enough chance to speak and raise your questions once I have completed my part. Is that clear with you? It's clear to me. All right. So this investigation started like this. your social security number has found many suspicious and a criminal activity in the state of Texas. So like answer some of my question, which is related to, to your case. So you have to be honest with me on this federal recording line. OK. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. So Mr. Smith, have you ever been to the state of Texas before in your life? I have. I lived there for 20 years. 20 years? At one point. Okay. And do you know of anyone over there who visit Texas frequently right now, like your friend, colleague, or any neighbor? Half my family is in Texas. Okay. Or your family is in Texas. That's correct. Have you ever lost your phone or your wallet in the past? Never. Never. Do you ever enter your personal details online on any sites while applying for a loans, credit cards, or a payday loans? Absolutely not. Right. Do you own a Toyota Corolla car, white in color? Um, no, but I did used to have one. How do you drive? I'm sorry? How do you drive? The name of your car. Well, I, I was, I, the car that I drive right now is, you know, it's a Buick Century. It's a Century. It's blue in color. Uh, no, it's actually red and white. Red and white. Okay. Now, Mr. Smith, did you live by yourself or you live with your family? Uh, no, I live by myself. You live by yourself. All right. So now, this investigation started when we found an abandoned car on the south border of Texas, and the car contained some blood and drugs residues inside it. Well, I... after investigation, we found that the car was rented on your name and your social personal information. We found there was one address linked with the title of the vehicle and the address in the city of Corolla which was been rated by the U.S. Marshals, but unfortunately, there was no one inside the residence. Well, oh, yes, we have recovered an eight pounds of cocaine, which is a very big in quantity of an abusive drug, and some documentations from financial institutes, such as Swiss Bank, Bank of America, U.S. Bank, Wells Fargo, TD Bank, PNC, BBNT, Credit Union, Standard Bank, and Citibank. And along with that, they're holding 10 to 12 debit cards and credit cards, which are registered under your name. And from those bank accounts, more than thousands of hundreds of dollars have been wired to the overseas countries like Japan, China, and Cayman Islands. Let me tell you, this entire paperwork has your name on it. That makes us suspicious. That is the reason why the Social Security Administration, the state of Texas, 
has filed a case against you for drug trafficking <laughs> money laundering as per the money laundering control act of 1986 now as we are running very short on time and what you have done is totally against the law of us treasury and drug enforcement administration and we as a social security administration have to sign the arrest warrant against you and have to suspend your social security number at this right present moment according to section 42 subsection c of 1958 drugs enforcement administration act you are going to be taken for a non bailable jail term of 9 years or more and a penalty will be between $89,000 to $150,000 now mr smith let us know that do you have any question about this suspicious and a criminal activity um I, now you can it, raise your question. I I I I don't I I I don't know, I don't know how uh, how y'all found out about this. Um, so I I'm I'm sorry. I I I I just you, I thought I thought that I didn't think that y'all would catch on to me so fast. So I, I'll just go to the I'll turn myself in to the police. I, I'm so sorry. You mean that this all is not done by you, correct? So it, do you have I, any I admit, on anyone who can do this? I admit it, it was all me. I, I just I don't how did y'all find out? How how did y'all find out? D let me ask you this. What do you mean? Is this done by you? Uh, it was it, it's all me. I admit it. Uh, it I did. So what do I need to do? You mean that this all is done by your name? And it, it's it was done by you. How, what did you want to say? How did you find out? How did you find out? Uh, because the, the U.S. Marshals. I'm here to arrest you. Okay. Uh, so let me ask you this: Do people actually yes. fall for this scam? Seriously? Oh, you mean that you are playing with me, correct? Your I, name is not a James. I know. I, I am screwing. I am screwing with you. Yes, I am. We got work to so, do. So, you know, do people fall for the scam? Much? Yes, really, they fall. Yes, they fall. Yeah. You motherfucker! You son of a bitch! Kiss my ass, motherfucker! You waste my energy, son of a bitch! I did waste your time. <laughs> You still there? All right. Bite me.